talking about with vegetative environmental buffers are tree and shrub based systems. Shelter belts or windbreaks, uh, occasionally they're called tree buffers. I think it's kind of important to give a little context where VEBs fit in sort of a hierarchy of odor management. There are technologies out there that are designed to prevent the generation of odorous maybe diet modification. The next is to either to, to attempt to capture and destroy these odorous chemicals before they're released into the atmosphere. Technology like biofilters. Um, using trees is really a tertiary or so the last line of defense. So the goals of vegetative environmental buffers, one is for visual screening, two is to have this vegetative filter where the trees are actually doing something to either disperse odors or to help filter odors out of the airstreams. They also like sort of windbreak effects. Uh, generally speaking, they like shade benefit. And then snow management obviously is a, is a big deal, snow fencing. First, a little bit about what odor is. Odor is a, is a really interesting thing. It's an incredibly complex mixing of upwards of over 400 chemicals that combine to create that very familiar manure smell. And it's this last point, this note about particulates and odor. This is really key. Um, research has shown that the majority of odor that moves downwind and ends up being problematic are, are these volatile organic compounds that are moving by way of particulate. And research has shown that to the degree that you can control particulate movement, Movement, you're also controlling the movement of odor. This is a simulated single row of trees. When an airstream reaches a row of trees, it does one of three things. Some of it goes around the outside, some of it goes through, some of it gets pushed up above. Where we think the big benefit is, is here to the lee. And so what happens when air comes across, the airstream compresses, it picks up bead, and it creates this zone of turbulent. It's called wind shear as it comes past past the tree, the, the airstream start to expand again, and you get this turbulence. It allows for a much slower release of these odorous particulates back into the downwind airstream. In terms of physical interception of dust, uh, somewhere around 90% of the odor particles are in the same size range that are best captured by trees. Not only that, but odor particles tend to be really irregular in shape for a better retention on tree surfaces, and it's a whole above ground part of a tree that acts as as surface area for filtration. You're probably looking at that tree in the background and thinking, man, that can't be healthy. And that's true. Precipitation can help wash tree surfaces. Aesthetics and odor perception. This is a really interesting one because it's one of the main reasons why a lot of producers want to use it, but it's also the most difficult to measure. There have been a few studies that have shown that as the attractiveness of a farm increases to the general population, their interpretation of odors tend to go down. Just some different views on what this looks like from the ground level. You're looking at an Austrian willow. This is incredibly fast growing. A lot of producers like it because you get that nice wall effect very quickly. There are other benefits of using this from a technological standpoint. One, it's, it's definitely a size neutral technology in that large producers or small can use trees in various ways. It's also user neutral. And this is sort of an interesting concept in that uh, someone downwind who is being bothered by a, a neighboring facility, they can plant trees too. It's a technology that can help with all sources of odor, so trees can be planted to deal with buildings, to deal with manure storage, to deal to some degree with fields that are receiving manure uh, applications. And in theory, there should be an increased effectiveness over time in that the trees are getting larger, more morphologically complex, and it's also comparatively very inexpensive. And it's species neutral. Again, I mentioned that largely our experience is with poultry and, and swine production, but it's a multi-species perspective because of the the commonalities in how odor through a landscape. From our research, VEBs do play a role. It's an incremental role, but, but from that tertiary perspective, they can play an important role. And it's a relatively inexpensive technology, but it is definitely an expense. Our research shows that a lot of farmers want to do it, but they're reluctant to take that first step unless there's financial incentive up front. It is, the, in Iowa anyways, it's the fastest growing application of the use of shelter belt. And uh, more information is becoming available, so always sort of keep your eye out for or new information that's that's coming out and with that I'm done